Good afternoon. My name is Robert. I'm an application engineer here with Sigma Tech, and today I'll be giving a webinar on advanced automatic nesting options and our HD Super Nest nesting engine. During this webinar, we're going to touch on the topics of selecting our nesting algorithms, uh, dialing in those algorithms with parameters, also the parameters to set up our sheet selection, our re-nesting options, uh, pre-nesting features, a brief example of continuous nesting, and a discussion of our HD Super Nest nesting engine. Uh, this will be followed by a question and answer session. The nesting algorithms we have in Sigma Nest fall into roughly three categories. Both the standard and the HD algorithms use a trial method to uh, discover the best nest, meaning they'll try a number of things sequentially, and then after they've tried a certain number of times, they'll pick the best one and then spit that back out to you. Uh, the standard algorithms were developed uh, a little bit longer ago. I like to call them the quick and dirty method. They will get the job done. It'll be very easy on the processors. It'll you know, not take up too much resources, and it'll get you roughly good answer to what you're looking for. Uh, so if you want to get it done quickly and you're not terribly worried about 1% or 2% extra scrap, um, then those can be a very good option to, to push through a lot of orders very quickly. Uh, the HD algorithms uh, leverage a little bit more computing power to improve the efficiency of the nests. They also give you access to a couple of uh, alternative uh, nesting styles like uh, strip nesting and shear nesting sort of thing. And then the HD Super Nest is a different sort of algorithm altogether. It, uh, it takes advantage of some more advanced mathematics and uh, produces highly optimized nests. Uh, instead of using a trial method, it uses a timed method where you can set aside a certain amount of time you want the algorithm to be able to work, and then at the end of that time period, it'll spit back the most efficient nest it was able to come up with. Uh, so you could tell it to spend 30 seconds, you could tell it to spend four hours, and it will spend that time trying to find the best nest and then give it back to you. Once we've selected our nesting engine, we have several parameters that we can edit to dial in the functionality of that engine. Uh, we can decide on a standard sheet size for nesting, and if we're not going to be using stock sheets, we can tell it whether to consider or not consider our lead-ins while nesting. We have a few options for common cut nesting, uh, whether single parts or multiple parts. We have multi-torch nesting settings, our primary parameters, which include the, uh, the basic things like our nesting engine, our part clearance, edge distance, number of tries, strategy, and other details for the nesting engine itself. Uh, we have our part sorting settings, which uh, determines the priority of how the parts are sorted. You can usually do that based on the area. We can also do it by work order and several other metrics. Uh, we have the process settings and clamp options to adjust your gas type and power levels if those are appropriate for your machine. We also have options for multi-sheet nesting, continuous nesting, uh, some small part handling options, and the use of mini nests to uh, group together nests that have already been created and nest them into larger nests. We'll go into the details on some of these settings in further slides. When we are setting up our task, we'll have the option to select some of these best sheet options on the right-hand side of our task pane. Uh, here, we can either tell it to uh, use no best sheet, which will not automatically select a sheet, relies only on the manual selection of your sheets. If we use best sheet mixed, 
It will use the most efficient sheets for the parts using as many different sheets as needed to get the job done. And then if we choose best sheet fixed, it'll pick a single sheet, uh, which will optimize the parts and the task, but it won't use more than one sheet. It may use multiple of that sheet, but it will only use one type of sheet. If you've already nested your parts and you need to add additional parts to your task, uh, Sigma Nest will offer you a few options how to move forward. Uh, you can use the continue feature, which will pick up on whichever layout you select from the continue from list, and then it will continue nesting from there forward. You can use the renest function, which will renest all of the parts in the task. Or you can select current sheet, which will only renest the current sheet you have selected, uh, or cancel to leave the menu. The pre nesting and mini nest features are able to be used if you have a group of two or more parts that you want to nest in the same way every time. You can pre nest them, create a mini nest, and save that. Uh, so that every time that you want to put them into a larger nest, you can just pull up the mini nest and it will automatically use that as a single part uh, in its nesting algorithm and not touch how that is nested in of itself. Uh, this can be very useful. In, in this case, you see it kind of looks like they're cutting out pop tabs, but um, any sort of smaller parts that you always cut the same amount of or you need them in the same orientation that this can be a useful tool to uh, optimize your nesting that way the continuous nesting option allows you to break up the workflow of your parts based on uh, some parameter that you select. It's typically a work order number or a customer, but it can be any of the parameters that are listed uh, in Sigma Nest. Uh, this allows us to sort them by uh, job or by when they need to come off the line uh, or by next process um, so that the, the actual sorting process at the machine is easier. They don't have to mix and match parts from different work orders. Uh, it also allows us to create crop lines between the different sections of parts. So if, um, if we've printed out all of the parts for one work order, it can then create a crop line and then parts can be unloaded and then the rest of the nest can be burnt after that. Uh, so it allows some flexibility in the, the process of uh, actually getting the parts on and off the machine and the order in which they come off the machine. That brings us to our HD Super Nest nesting algorithm. It's definitely the most capable nesting algorithm we offer. And like I was saying before, it works slightly differently than the others, where you'll give it a designated amount of time for it to work. And when that time is up, it'll come back with the most efficient nest it was able to find. Like for instance, you could give it one minute and it comes back with one nest and then maybe you give it five minutes instead, and it comes back with a, a significantly better nest. Uh, it, it's somewhat diminishing returns, so if you were to give it a whole hour and then it comes up with a very good nest, and then you decide we'll only try two hours, it, it might only get you know, 0.3, 0 0.5% increase in efficiency for that whole next extra hour. But uh, if you were processing a large volume of parts, that could definitely come in handy. Uh, just having that efficiency available there so you can let it run as long as you need it to in order to get those highly efficient nests. Or if, for instance, you're working with a very expensive material, cutting out titanium or something, uh, it can be a big difference to shave you know, one or two percent off your scrap percentage. That brings us to the end of our presentation on the Sigma Nest nesting engines. If you have questions and would like to ask them now, please stick around for our question and answer session. 
If you're watching this in the future on a video, you can reach out to your sales representative with any questions, or you can call us in our support center at the contact information listed there below. Uh, thank you for your attention, and you have a good day.